If you're real serious about learning more about the Shakers and their furniture, you really owe it to yourself to make a visit to a place like the Hancock Shaker Museum in western Massachusetts. Now in this building, a lot of the rooms are set up as they were originally used when the Shakers lived here. Now this room right here is what would be called a waiting room or a gathering room. And along with all the larger pieces of furniture are these little stools that caught my attention. Look at this one. Kind of a thick top, but some turned legs. I can imagine a Shaker sister sitting here doing some sewing or knitting. And look at this one. Very delicate, but nicely crafted with through dovetails made out of some thin pine. Certainly not something I would want to step on. But over here is one that you could actually climb up on. This one also, I think, is made of pine. It also features the nice through dovetails to lock it all together. It is a little strange that the steps are so far apart, about 12 inches. Looks a little precarious. But it was real necessary to get up into high storage areas, like this cabinet. Now, there are a lot of stools in the collection here at the village, and I think I'll spend some time studying them, and maybe I can come up with one that'll work for us. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. But remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's projects. Well, it turns out that there are a lot of different versions of Shaker step stools. Perhaps they were very useful in the Shaker world of high storage cupboards and cabinets. Now, this particular stool comes from a book of old Shaker furniture designs. It features three steps, it's made out of pine, and all the joinery that holds it together I made with handheld power tools and hand tools. Now, this one over here is the one we saw at the Hancock Shaker Village. I made mine out of cherry, and it features these nice through dovetails that were made with a sophisticated dovetailing jig and a router. Now, with any kind of luck, we'll be able to build both of these today. Let's start with the pine one. Now, yesterday, I took some 1x8 pine boards and glued them together to make some panels for the side of the stool. And the first thing I want to do is I need a nice straight edge, so I'm going to joint the long side, making it straight and square. Now I've just squared up the bottom edge of the blank using my homemade panel cutter. Now I'm going to mark the height of the side piece, which is 24 and a half inches, and cut that off. And I'll do the same thing to the other blank. Now here's one of the side blanks with all the layout lines. And where I want to start actually cutting is along this line right here, one of the horizontal lines for the treads. Now, if you're real good, you could cut that with a hand saw. But I like the accuracy of my circular saw and a straight edge clamp. Now, in order to set up the clamp, you need to have an offset distance from the clamp to the cut line. And that's equal to the distance on the blade to the edge of the base. You could measure it, but because I do this frequently, I've made a gauge block. And that's always the same, the distance from the edge of the cutting blade to the edge of the base. All I do is take the gauge, put it on the layout line, slide the clamp up against it, and tighten it down. All right, that works great. Now I'll do that for all the other cross cuts.
Now to make the corresponding horizontal cuts on the other side of the stool, I'm using a narrower gauge block because I want to use the narrow side of the saw base. Now to make the vertical or the rip cuts, I use the same gauge block, straight edge, and my circular saw. Now my 10 point cross cut saw does a good job finishing up the corners. Note that the sides of the stool are held together by the treads and these rails. Now the front rails have a half dovetail joint. I'll make those notches for my rails starting with my jigsaw and I'll cut first for the thickness of the rail. I like to just hold on to the base of the tool, run my knuckle up against the side of the stock, and use it as a guide. To make the cross cuts, which lock in the dovetail, they're at a slight angle, and I'm simply going to use my dovetailing saw. Just hold my thumb up against it to guide it, and cut straight down. There are two back rails which are led into the sides. The bottom one sits in a simple dado. I'm going to use my jigsaw and my square to make the cross cuts. Notice that the sides of the stool have a cutout, and that's so that it'll sit on an uneven floor more easily. Now the height at the very top of the arch is three and a half inches, but the layout radius that I need is five and a quarter. So I've set my compass to five and a quarter inches. If I put the pencil on my three and a half inch height, I have no pivoting point. So I'm simply going to use the other sides of the stool, butt it up against the bottom as a pivot point, lay out the arch on one, Reverse it to the other side, set the pencil at three and a half, and lay out the other one. Now I'll just sand that smooth. Now with the three front rails clamped in the workbench, I need to make a dovetail cut on each end. And I think there's no easier way than to use the regular dovetailing saw. Well, now it's time for a little assembly, and I'll put the back rails on first. After putting a little bit of glue in the joint, 
setting it in position, flush with the outside, and I'll fasten it with a couple four penny finish nails. Now I'll do the same thing for the top rail. The risers tilt back at a slight angle, so that means when I install the rails, I need to have a front edge that's a little bit lower than the back edge, and I can do that over on the joiner. Now I've adjusted the fence on my joiner to tilt out at about four degrees, and now I can run the piece through. Okay, that's what I want. Now for some glue and nails. The ends and the front edge of the first two treads are rounded over, and all four edges are rounded on the top tread. Now to do that work, I'm going to use my router and router table. I've set it up with a half inch rounding over bit, and as usual, I'll do the end grain first, then the edge. Before I can install the treads, I have to bevel the back edge so that it'll fit tightly against the riser. And for that, once again, I'll turn to the joiner. Okay, well that takes care of everything except one little detail, and that's to round over the back edge of the first two treads. And to do that, I'm just going to use my rasp and a little bit of sandpaper. Well, that takes care of this one, except for the paint. Now let's turn to the one that I'd like to make out of cherry. I noticed that on the original step stool that the side board was all one piece. And that's okay, because all the dovetails were cut by hand. I'm using a dovetailing jig and a router. And because of that, I need to make it basically in two pieces with a joint line right down here at the riser. The first thing I'm going to do is cut the through dovetails for the bottom step and the top step on both sides. Well, before we get started, let's get the through dovetail nomenclature correct. This sample will best show us the parts. Now pull it apart and you'll see that this piece is known as the tail piece because it looks like a series of dove's tails. And this piece is known as the pin piece. Now to mill all these pieces, I'm going to use my dovetailing jig. Every manufacturer is a little bit different. So when I got this jig, I spent quite a bit of time reading through the instruction manual, viewing the video, and practicing on a lot of scrap wood until I felt real confident with it. Now I've got it set up to cut the tails in the treads. The real key to this tool is the collar that surrounds the dovetail bit. 
it follows the edges of the template cutting the tails in the piece. Now I just turn the piece around and cut the tails on the other end. Okay, now we're ready to cut the pins. So I've mounted the side piece in the jig, flicked the whole template over so that it is now in the pin cutting mode and I've changed the router bit to a straight cutting bit. Yeah. Now that's all I need to do to the bottom step for now. Now I can start working on the top member, making the dovetails exactly the same way. Because the top tread is a little bit narrower than that first one, I have to readjust the fingers on the jig for a different tail pin layout. That's what I really like about this jig is that because these pieces are movable, there's an infinite number of combinations. take another look at the prototype and I'll show you a couple more cuts I need to make. I need a dado right here for this back rail. And then I need a small rabbit for the front rail down here and another one up here. And I'll make those on the table saw. Well, I suppose you could use the dado head to do this a little more quickly, but since there's only a few cuts, this works just as well. I've just finished cutting some slots in both side pieces for these compressed beechwood biscuits. And combined with some glue, that's going to make a joint that's never going to fall apart. I use a brush to spread some glue up on this edge of the biscuit. Now slip the two pieces together holding the bottom even. Okay, and now put it in a clamp until the glue dries. Now a little bit of glue in the dado at the rear of the side piece and I can fasten the cross member. I'll just use a couple four penny finish nails. One of the advantages of this type of dovetail joint is that there are lots of glue surface areas. So I want to make sure I get them all and I apply the glue with a brush. Doesn't that fit nicely? Okay, now I can put the front cross pieces on. And here I'm just going to use my brad nailer with some one-inch brads. 
Well, now I'll just let that set for a little while before we go on to the next step. Okay, now it's just a matter of sanding everything smooth and flush. Well, it won't be long and I'll be ready to put the finish on both of these pieces. Now for our pine step stool, I've chosen a brick red for the final color. But before I could put that on, I need to prime it with a latex underbody. Now for our cherry step stool, I'm going to darken it a little bit with some stain. It makes the wood look a little bit richer. This is a water soluble stain and I'm just applying it with a foam brush putting a nice even coat on. Now before the stain gets any drier, I'm taking a clean rag and rubbing it in in a circular motion. Then the next step is to simply rub it with the grain. Well, the next operation to our pine stool is to fill all the nail holes. And to do that, I'm just using a little bit of glazing compound. And I find a glazing compound to be a good choice because it doesn't dry up and fall out. Well, with this final coat of acrylic latex, that's all we have to do to this pine stool. This stool is going to be subject to some hard use, so I want to protect it. And what I'm putting on is the first of three coats of a water-soluble gloss polyurethane. It goes on a little milky, but it'll dry crystal clear. And because it dries quickly, I'll be able to put on all three coats today. Well, as we've learned, the shakers use these stools to get up into those high storage areas. I've been told that around my house, they'll be used to display some plants. Who knows, you may come up with a whole new use for these stools. Generally used when the shakers lived here. Now, this room right here is what would be called a waiting room or a gathering room. And along with all the larger pieces of furniture, are these little stools that caught my attention. Look at this one. Kind of a thick top, but some turned legs. I can imagine a shaker sister sitting here doing some sewing or knitting. And look at this one. Very delicate. But If you're real serious about learning more about the shakers and their furniture, you really owe it to yourself to make a visit to a place like the Hancock Shaker Museum in western Massachusetts. Now in this building, a lot of the rooms are set up as they were originally a little precarious, but it was real necessary to get up into high storage areas like this cabinet. Now there are a lot of stools in the collection here at the village, and I think I'll spend some time studying them and maybe I can come up with one that'll work for us. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tool. Nicely crafted with through dovetails, made out of some thin pine. Certainly not something I would want to step on. But over here is one that you could actually climb up on. This one also, I think, is made of pine. It also features the nice through dovetails to lock it all together. It is a little strange that the steps are so far apart, about 12 inches. Look at those. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. But remember this, 
there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now I'll show you how I built today's projects. Well, it turns out that there are a lot of different versions of shaker step stools. Perhaps 